Hello and welcome to Reality Check. My name is Rachel Mwine. I am your host. I am excited that you have chosen to spend the next 45 maybe to an hour depending on how the conversation goes with us. This is Reality Check and we care for hearts and minds. Every week we have conversations um, regarding mental health and how it presents in our marriages, in our relationships, in our families, in our parenting journey and also in the workplace. And uh, we are going to be talking about marriage, uh, attempting to answer a question, is marriage overrated? Yeah, and uh, before we get into what we are talking about, we're joined by two special people, a gentleman and a lady. Lady, not very new to you for those of you that are regulars on this channel, Dr. Eva Satwine. She's the founder of International Center for Mental Health and Family Care, and she's also a therapist, a marriage therapist, a parenting coach, life coach, um, relationship coach. So. Those are areas that she offers support and services at ICFC. So if you need help, please take advantage of the numbers in our scroll. Go visit her and she's surrounded by a wonderful team of therapists. And then we have to my left, SP Onaba, that's how I know him. <laughs> but to the, for formality's sake, you are Simon Peter, right? Yes, yes. Simon Peter. Um, Simon Peter is married, has been married. I was joking with him that he's been married since 2005. <laughs> it seems like a long time. No. But it's not really. <laughs> is it? No, I've been married since... 1996. Oh my oh, gosh! Yeah. <laughs> there I must you have go. Been in something. Yeah. No, no, like senior, senior, like senior one, like, maybe. Yeah, senior one, senior, senior one, two, senior two. Which one are you born? <laughs> yes, I was. <laughs> Don't I? I was in P7, 1996. I was completing my primary seven. So um, SP oh is, uh, we're going to call him SP on the show because yes. yeah, it's just, just, just easier. easier. <laughs> yeah. He's married to Joy Onaba and uh, they've been married for close to 20 years, almost 20 years. And uh, together they have three boys. They are the founders of Happy Marriage Forever. It's an intentional community of growing marriages and strong families families. Mm -hmm. We'll be hearing more about that and his wealth of experience. So welcome to the show, gentlemen, mm -hmm. lady. It's good to have you here. So our conversation today, Is Marriage mm -hmm. Overrated, was prompted by a viewer, um, one member of our audience, and she commented, she's actually called Rosalia Shiweva. I hope she's okay me mentioning her name. Mm -hmm. And she says, can we please break down the benefits of marriage? The statement marriage is a beautiful thing, but a partnership that requires hard work. It sounds like an oxymoron, right? <laughs> Are we saying we hope everyone can get married? Mm -hmm. uh, meaning the beauty of marriage can never be experienced by a single person. Mm -hmm. I would like to know, which for me is my favorite question. Is marriage hard or do some people experience hard marriages? <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah. And so <laughs> she basically painted a show for us. Mm. I didn't do much in terms of scripting. So here mm. we are, SP and Dr. Evers. Mm. Is marriage for everyone? <laughs> we hope this no. <laughs> no. No, 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 no. There is, um, hmm. No, marriage is not for all. It's not for everyone. Yeah. Okay. That, that is a quick and simple answer. I think that the, there are those who desire to be married, and they should be married. Yeah. There are those who have, um, I think there are those who are celibate. Those, I, know, I know some people who are, they are content, they are fulfilled, and they just, you, they make you want to be, to be, to be that way, and the people like that. And then um, <laughs> there is roles. I think in the in the scriptures, you know, when you read the Bible, it talks about the eunuchs and people like those who came into certain vocations because uh, they they just could not get married and they would rather uh, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And and they are very fulfilled and they're very okay that yeah. way. Yeah. So marriage is not for is not for everyone. And then the, there is people so who they would like to get married, but then you count i want to call it the cost, the cost yes. <laughs> and then hmm you go like you know what you maybe, very maybe yeah not. but <laughs> if if there is a situation where i don't know if there's such a thing as marriage getting married peer pressure mm. if there is a thing like that and maybe that's what we sometimes experience yeah. 
and um, like a mob mm -hmm. in, in, in that sense. But I, I, would, I wouldn't say that marriage is for everyone, yes. Yeah, there is a lot of <coughs> marriage peer pressure or marriage pressure. Mm. I don't know if it's in our society today. I don't know if it was there, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Mm. But in the area that we live in today, a lot of people maybe desire it or maybe it's just the... The, the atmosphere that is created mm. by people getting married every weekend, so and so is being introduced, this one is getting married. And so there's, there's a pressure that has mounted and I'm curious to know, Dr. Ivas, do you mm. think marriage is for everyone? Mm. <laughs> the answer is somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to um, think it a little harder. Yeah. Mm. And uh, I want to <clears throat> take it to scripture. Mm -hmm from Genesis mm. to verse 18, mm. where God said, it's not good for a man to be alone. Mm. And he said, I'll make him a helper, mm. suitable. Mm. And uh, um, I hear you and, and I'll also talk about indeed um, areas where I think maybe it's not for everyone. Mm. But then for me, the, the founding, um, the foundational aspect to this whole conversation, I think this is God's concept. Mm. Now, I, I also wouldn't want to look at marriage in isolation because there's marriage, uh, when marriage is isolated from what we call a marriage institution, mm. Mm. and if you allow me to go there, institution, because we have to um, trust the wisdom of God, of the Creator, who, who decided that He was going to, He created us, but then He also put establishments and organizations and systems to support healthy living. Mm. And so I go back to that scripture where He says, It's no good for a man to be alone. Mm. I'll make them a helper, mm. suitable. Now, of course, so much conversation about how this was Adam and, and uh, but you know, the whole helping aspect mm. is very important. And, and uh, also that we need to look at, you, you know, you, you can't discuss the importance of a thing without looking at its value. Mm. Why was it, why was he saying it's not good mm. for a man to be alone? Mm. Now, I'll go to psychology, Rachel, and tell you that um, humans, we were created to interact. Mm. And so this human connection, that's where we get happiness from and fulfill fulfillment. Yeah. And so I, can und I didn't understand so much the mind of God until I did psychology. Mm. Because what is psychology without God? So we are able to understand even scripture mm. in a deeper way because then you're like, hey, so this is what it means. Yeah. Okay, so when he says it's not good to be alone, this is what it means. When he says, I hate divorce, he's talking about the devastating effects of mm. divorce. When he says it's not good to be alone, he's talking about companionship. Yes. So that kind of deep companionship, mm. that intimate yeah. companionship, that institution which actually mirrors our relationship, our intimate relationship with him, mm. is what he called marriage. Mm. And in my view, from that scripture, again, I could be wrong, but I look at it deep from that, that starting point of it's not good yes. for you to be alone. Yeah. And, and now when I get into psychology, I see the benefits of marriage. Like, um, I don't know, Rachel, whether I'm jumping the gun. <laughs> <laughs> you are. You are. <laughs> Yes, because you see, yes. I said that we can never discuss something, its importance, without looking at the value. Because mm. otherwise it becomes a point of, of uh, argument yeah. mm. and debate, yeah. which I hate so much yeah. sometimes. <laughs> because truth is not to be debated. Yeah. So when I went into, when I studied psychology, then I understood, and even when you look at recent trends in, in family and, and family-based mm. research, mm. We, we're seeing that married people um, have a higher capacity mm -hmm. to have so much happiness, mm -hmm. right? Yes. They are happier. Now, I'm careful because I'm talking about capacity because I can hear some viewers say, what do you mean? Mm. Like, mm. I'm sure you understand. Yeah, yeah. yes. <laughs> you, you know, so happiness, 
what are we looking for in yeah. life? Yeah. We're looking for happiness. Mm -hmm. So in marriage, married people have a higher capacity for happiness. Number mm. two, married people have a, a lower, um, a lower, what is it called? Um, lower chances mm. of, of being depressed. Mm. Right? We, we're seeing so much depression in marriage or in life generally. Yeah, yes. But even then, mm. married people have a lower yeah. yes. chance, yeah. chance mm. of being depressed. Number three, marriage gives a lot of meaning in life. Mm. Right? And, and again, of course, it's a matter of choice, and that's what we're going to talk about. Mm. But please note that um, there are a higher mm. chance in that institution. Yeah. So that institution actually cushions us and supports mm. and gives us these benefits um, uh, of health and wellness. Um, even, even in terms of economics, mm. we see um, research Mar that has been done shows that married people um, have a higher chance of economic stability. Yeah. Yeah. And, and of course, we know where this comes from. Yeah. I know the drama that is in families where people uh, don't share finances, but don't worry about that. Mm. When it is done well, yeah. we are also seeing that there are chances of better economic status mm. than single people. Yes. And uh, even in terms of behavior issues, mm. married people tend to be more stable mm -hmm. in terms of how they order their lives mm. because there is an aspect of accountability. Yes. You see, there are certain things, Rachel, you wouldn't do because you're Ben's wife. Mm. Yeah. You see? And, and a so, speed governor. <laughs> and a, <laughs> yeah, so our behavior gets regulated That's by true. this institution mm. because then we, are, we have to be accountable. Yeah. And when children come in, we also, there are certain things I wouldn't do. Mm. Probably there's a certain way I wouldn't dress because of my children, yeah. right? So there is all those benefits, mm. but most importantly, a higher chance for happiness yes. compared to single people yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. any additions <laughs> no I, to I totally agree yeah the, i like dr evers what you we need to go back to the origin yes we need to go back to the set out design yes and for me lately one of the things that we've we, we can all do things different ways but it's always important to go to the maker and understand why, how, because then within that context, we are provided a boundary. We, um, we talk about covenant, mm -hmm. the marriage institution. We, we think about um, one of our learnings, not so recently, but that we find that we are going back to a lot now, mm -hmm. is the understanding of marriage as a covenant. Mm -hmm. yeah. And within the covenant, there is terms and conditions. Mm -hmm. There is inherent provisions that are captured within that covenant. Yeah. And to the extent that a husband and a wife walk and are compliant, mm -hmm. now we talk about, you know, what was the other question of, uh, is it a hard marriage yeah. or you found, or you, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It's very simple. When you drive on the roads and you are compliant with the regulations and so on, you have peace on the road. Yeah. When you deviate yet then you have problems now the challenge though is that we have found a way humanity always finds a way to work within the malfunction mm. yeah. so even if we are doing it and it, it seemingly seems it is working but away from the design it is a malfunction yeah. and when a malfunction happens we that's where we begin to have a problem so I think it's important from the very onset to understand um, for me, it's exciting yeah. that, you know, the things, Dr. Ivers, that you've talked about, mm. joy and happiness, yeah. uh, the ability within, I mean, I think about my relationship with my wife. Mm. There are things that even right now, just dealing with stuff, and sometimes I empathize with people who are not me in that yeah. regard, because in the genuine sense, I have a shoulder to lean on. Yeah. There is a realm of conversation that we get into where I don't have to, 
where the words just don't come through. Mm. But then she understands. She understands. And that understanding and that connection with another human being mm -hmm. is a very powerful thing and yeah. can see you through. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, in dealing with challenges, I'm just talking about one of the benefits of marriage is that even in the toughest of times, mm -hmm. yeah. your fight still is on. Why? Because there's this understanding and this knowing that I have you. I, have you. I know yeah. it in my bones, in my marrow, yeah. that you're with me no yeah. matter what yeah. and so that aspect gets us to sail through things that we would otherwise not sail through so understanding design uh what was god's intention for marriage i think about marriage for me rachel this morning when we're coming mm -hmm. and we're having this conversation i think about marriage from the world of advertising Those marriage is an ad agency basically yeah. mm -hmm. and uh we um you know, we um, we are doing. We have a brand that we need to promote and get out there, and that is the Lord, the Maker of marriage. And I'm, I'm sure we'll get into those a bit wow. later. Wow. Um, <laughs> I think that um, you said something that I think caught my attention. Just knowing that there is somebody who has your back, mm -hmm. and I think that knowing it happens over time as the years unfold in your marriage. Mm -hmm you know a bit more than you did last year that this person has my back and then the following year unfolds you go through challenges and then you know like for sure now i know you know you were sure last year but even now you are even sure that this person has your back and i think that's such a valuable thing mm. for an individual you keep talking about the security that marriage provides if again it is done well and in the context of marriage, I know some people might be watching and saying, but oh, married people, they cheat on each other, there's unfaithfulness, blah, blah, blah. But we're going to talk about the rules and regulations yeah. at some point. Mm. Let's talk about the relationship between marriage being a beautiful thing versus the work. Mm. <laughs> yeah, because we hear, and I think that's, you were saying earlier, I think we yeah. hadn't gotten on the air, mm. that people have mastered the art of masking we put on a good face yeah. we show up at events we are mr. and mrs and we look good but on mm. the inside we are not okay mm. so there's a, a, a an advertisement mm. of marriage is a beautiful thing it's a beautiful partnership if you've watched mm. this channel long enough dr. Eva says that a lot versus but you have to put in the work mm. yeah, like, guys is it beautiful like or it's work. hard work <laughs> you know so so help oh me manage that relationship ah. yeah how do the two play into each other <laughs> you're looking at me. i'm looking at you <laughs> <laughs> you want our guest to go first no i'll go okay. i'll go okay so um beautiful thing that we haven't worked have for <laughs> okay so um once again marriage is a good thing yeah. Yes. Um, I can sit here and talk about the beauty of marriage endlessly because th that's truth. It's yes. not up for debate. Yes. But you see how you apply that truth. Mm. It varies. Varies. Yeah. I'm a soccer person. Mm. You want to know my team? What's your team? <laughs> Man, you. Oh my God. I am not a soccer Man, person. <laughs> That's why I don't have a team. <laughs> soccer is good. Mm. Soccer is wonderful. Mm. I love it. I loved it before I got married mm. until marriage mm. took okay, the marriage. joy of it. <laughs> but uh, um, all these things are good. Mm. But how we play the game, mm. that's the whole thing. Yeah. Now, Rachel, we've talked about the, 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 the beauty of marriage. Mm. So let me, let me emphasize a few more things. We've talked about health and wellness, but let me take you back to um, psychology and what we are seeing. 90% mm. of our health and wellness and happiness mm. is called relational. Yes. Mm. Right? So relational health and wellness is from human interaction. <clears throat> The health we get from food and all and all that, that's different. Mm. It's nutritional. That's nutritional. Mm. And, and, and then the money, the material things, that's so little it's only 10%. Mm. All everything combined, 10%. That's why most people are frustrated mm. because they feel they got everything, but they feel empty. Mm. Yeah. Because relational health is not taken care of. Mm. But Interestingly, out of the 90 relational health, 80, mm -hmm. 80% 80 
80 of the 90, please note, mm -hmm. is from what we call core relationships, where marriage mm -hmm. is. Mm. That's true. Right? Marriage and children. Yeah. And, 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 and sometimes, mm -hmm. actually, you know, the, these, these relationships that really are so core. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, when you look at that, that's so much health. Mm. It's a lot. That's why whenever our marriages are malfunctional, mm. we run to other places and we mm. say, I have a job, I'll be. Then you do that job, then you're empty. Mm. Then we, we try this, then we buy a new car, then we try the other things. Yeah, but right. then the core relationships are struggling, you're going to get dysfunctional. Yeah. Probably, um, I'll say something that people will resonate with. When you have a conflict with your partner mm. and, and you go to work, most of the time you don't function. Not you spend the yes. whole day at work, mm. but your mind is back home yeah. in mm. your relationship. Mm. This is not so for other relationships, mm. right? There, there are relationships which we can easily question you. Mm. But this is a relationship that is so core. core to you. When our children are going bad, that's a core relationship. Yes. And so you can struggle. Mm. But let me, we're talking about marriage. Mm -hmm. So marriage is so, so important. And I want to tell you, Rachel, I'm emphasizing this <clears throat> because I've, in my therapy work, I've realized we, we, we love marriage, <clears throat> but we don't prioritize it. No. Mm. And one of the reasons we don't prioritize it is that we don't know how crucial it is it to is. our well-being. Yeah. So that's number one. Now, let me also explain it a little more for people to understand. 80% of our energy, human energy, this which helps us to run and, mm. and be okay, is called psychic energy. Mm. That psychic energy is what we call, we get from relationships. Mm. Okay? Now, there are other three forms of energy. We have chemical, mm. which, which is um, energy from food and all and all mm. that. That is, that is only 12% mm. of all the energy that a human being gets. gets. Mm. We have thermal energy, which is um, thermal energy, which is 2%. Mm -hmm. Warmth. We need warmth. Mm. You see? So clothes, the sun, and yeah. all that. Yeah. And then we have what we call um, electrical energy, which powers our nervous system. Mm. That is 6%. Mm. So those three forms of energy only constitute 20% of energy. Yeah. Psychic energy the that we use, the 80, mm. is from relationships. Mm. So where, where does this come from? A feeling of being loved, uh -huh. ability to love, mm. th th that hope, that security you being have. Being wanted. Being yeah. wanted. You know, that gives you a sense of relevance in life and meaning. Mm. That's what we get from relationships. Mm. Now, if we, so I said that the bigger part is from core, core relationships. Yes. So if you want to check, you're talking, um, some of us, Pastor, you're going to listen. <laughs> us ladies, we are selfish. So we want our partners to say, you look good. You, look good, mm. yes. you just look good. Mm. And, and that statement can just up your psychic energy in yes. a way that you can't believe. Yes. You're like, <gasps> I look good. You saw? Yes, yes, Recently, yes. my husband made a statement and said, wow, your skin is looking great. Yeah. <laughs> and it is. <laughs> you see? And, and he said, you look so young. I'll not mm. tell you how young. <laughs> but you know what? I had so much in it. I cleaned the bath. I could carry an elephant. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> no, do you understand what this means? Yes. You just get so much energy. Just yes. because someone has told you, you look good, you are yes. amazing, I yes. love you. And all. Yeah. That's what human nature is about. Yes. It's not about all these other big things we've yes. already thought about. So that relational health mm. is so core and it's rooted in, our, in that most intimate yes. human relationship. Mm. Because marriage is the most intimate, intimate. human relationship. relationship. Mm -hmm. So that, this marriage, if we make it good, and the reason we are running this show is that people can actually mm. pay attention to that relationship. Yeah. You don't deprive it, but then you expect it to make you ah, feel good. That's the work. Yeah. Mm. Then, then the, the other point, I want, so that we are talking about that emotional fulfillment. Mm. Very important. Mm. But then also, Rachel, the character development. Mm. 
Marriage is important for character development. Mm -hmm. I talked about accountability, yeah. a sense mm -hmm. of responsibility, mm -hmm. but do you know that marriage, and I'm sure a pastor who is here will, will, will agree with me, and I'm sure you've experienced this, that in marriage, mm -hmm. that's where we do unconditional forgiveness. Yes. yes. Mm. Now forgiveness, good conflict management, mm. good communication, mm. When we are in marriage, we have, a no, we have no choice but to mm. learn these things. Mm. And do you know when you become an excellent communicator, mm. right? In marriage, mm -hmm. you ha you've mastered the art of forgiveness yeah. because mm. this person is there. Mm. Choose not to forgive them, the you're going to die. Mm. And so when we are in marriage, mm. God trains us trains our character. That's an institution that helps to train us in character. Yeah. That's true. Mm. So these are important, very beautiful things. Now, I, I speak as a life coach mm. because we encourage people to be better. Mm. You've heard me, Rachel, say, if you live every five years, there's nothing that has changed about you mm. except you advertising. You say, me, that's who I am. That's who I am. Me, that's who I am. It's <laughs> a consistent now, one. <laughs> If we do that, mm. that means you're not getting better and mm. it's not fun mm. for you to say, me, my anger, me, my, my unforgiveness, mm. me, when you do this, I cut That's you off, mm. me, 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 that mm. doesn't help. But in marriage, by the way, we have a higher chance mm. of adjusting our character. Yeah. Mm. Any person that has been married five, ten 15 years, mm. will tell you that they are not the same way yeah. they were when they got married mm. because their perspective has changed, changed. on a number of things. Wow. Issues around emotional regulation, mm. that's character. Mm. That's important for us because when they say, hey, when your husband, we tend to get that training as women. When your husband does <coughs> it, put water in the mouth, don't say. <laughs> now, I used to hate that so much because I had it from the older mm. um, mother's union mm. women and they yeah. say do that. It has a side to it that is annoying yeah. because that means you're suppressing feelings. Yes. But then when you think about it, it's about please don't respond in anger yeah. mm. because you're going to make things worse, mm. right? That character development, mm. that's important. We learn it in the mm. institution of, of marriage. marriage, right? Yeah. So I want to emphasize once again that let's not just say, is marriage good, but no. Mm. It's an institution that helps to shape our functionality mm. for healthy living yeah. here on earth. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, and oh, when wow. that is done, then mm. we experience that beautiful the beauty. partnership. Yes. yes. Okay. Oh, wow. SP. <laughs> Rachel, I'm bubbly. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's a lot of resonance yeah. in you know in all you know in the things that Dr. Evers is sharing. Mm. Let me character development. Mm. Let me just throw these you know these out and then we will I will try and uh, and, and and organize them. Mm. So the place of intimacy, the place of fasts. Mm -hmm. They you see the Many of us, I was telling Rachel earlier that it's a miracle. It's not really the number of years. Yeah. It's not the quantity. And sometimes I find that people throw around yeah. the number of years. But it is, as Dr. Evers is alluding to, it's the quality of the relationship yeah. that really counts at the end of the yeah. day. Because marriage can go two ways. Mm -hmm. And yes, it is beautiful. Indeed, it is. I mean, you read the book of Song of song oh my god now i know that in church they will tell us that song of songs is a picture figurative of the love of christ and the church and and that's okay but could it also be and this is what i tend to believe that song of songs is really a depiction of a celebration of love between a man and his darling, his wife, yeah. in a relationship that is covenant. My goodness, it is, I mean, you just read it. It's full of, it's one of my favorite it's books. Really? It, yeah. it is, I mean, she says, she says, you know, she, she says, in, uh, daughters, my sisters, my what, what, do not awaken love until it so desires. Because when you awaken it at the wrong time, it's as powerful as death. It, this, 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 Intimacy we talk about, that Dr. Evers talks about, is at the very core place. And out of it, 
a lot of other things then spring. No wonder what we have seen is that the heartbreaks, the dysfunctionality, when the center falls apart is huge. The greatest impact of, you know, wayward children and the shadows where we come from, the shadows where we come from, learning to love or not to love, learning to trust or not to trust. You know, when you look at um, the challenges that many of us deal with, many of them can comfortably be traced back to the home, to the home, to the family. And even right now, when, we, when the relationship between mom and dad, husband and wife, begins to have challenges, and they are not taken care of, the people who feed the children you talked about, who feed from that relationship, their world begins to shake. Marriage is wonderful, it is great, the greatest relationship ever. For me, I actually think that marriage is one of the things that God says, through marriage, I will make known myself. That's right. And so in coming into contact with it, you experience elements of my character That's right. my patience you yes. talked about forgiveness yes. my love yes. my you don't deserve this but i'll give it to you there is times when i have known god loves me because of the way my wife has treated as simple as yeah. that i have known that and then there is also this whole factor of uh, i like to call it the emmanuel principle mm -hmm. where jesus i mean we're told when jesus comes a b c d uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> forgive that mm -hmm. and he says emmanuel God with us. Mm -hmm. So while I may not necessarily physically be with my wife, yet I know she is with me. Mm -hmm. And there is that intimacy. Mm -hmm. Now you've also seen, I think in certain circles, they draw, when we do marriage training, marriage prep for people, mm -hmm. they, they draw a triangle yeah. with the three points. So at one corner they put God, and then on one end they put husband and wife, and then they say to us that, as we focus on God and grow in our relationship with him, the distance between the two of us reduces. reduces yes. And that is true. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. I would also like to say that the place of intimacy, of beauty, mm -hmm. is this. That within that triangle, within the boundaries that have been set, mm -hmm. that God comes from his place, the husband comes from the place, and then on this other tip, mm -hmm. and then a journey begins to, there's an invitation to come, and that's growth, yeah. to the center and the place of intimacy, which I find that is a very, very powerful place. Now, when we have that place and that's where life is happening from, then definitely growth is a result. Is a result. We apply ourselves to grow. Yeah. We don't grow automatically. Mm -hmm. That is when you begin to talk about otherness. Yeah. So I do this not necessarily because I have, I have to, to or I need to, but I do this because I love you, yeah. because we understand that love is a behavior and it can be learned. Yeah. So love is this. So we grow yeah. and we are changing. And as we grow, we touch other people around us and then we teach other people. Other people begin to catch on the thing. So it is beautiful. It's a stewardship, the work part of it. Yeah. Don't expect that you will get good when you're not applying yourself to it. No, mm -hmm. that's madness. Mm -hmm. We must invest, yeah. and we must invest in the right ways. For example, you alluded to it, communication. There is such a thing as a right way to communicate and a wrong, a wrong way, way to communicate. To communicate. Yeah. I agree. Oh, powerful. Powerful. Oh, yes, I want to um, thank you so much, mm. um, SP. SP. <laughs> 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 Fantastic. So um, I just wanted to um, thank you so much for that beautiful submission. I wanted to uh, amplify one or two things that he has mm -hmm. talked about, um, raising children, yeah. because um, this shouldn't sound like a parenting session, but we are putting it in to talk about the beauty of marriage mm. and how it is a, life, a lifeline for children. And I want to bring in psychology here. Um, when we talk about uh, a family, where children are raised. Mm -hmm. We have different families right now. But uh, we, we're talking about a family that is founded on marriage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so we have a family, we have, we have four subsystems in a system called marriage. Mm -hmm. You see institution, system? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because these things are, are, are establishments to help us function in a healthy way. way. So a family 
has four subsystems. We have what we call the spousal, which is marriage. Mm. Spousal subsystem mm -hmm. is the foundation of a family. And, and so that relationship is so important. As a matter of fact, mm. you, again, you'd hear uh, science tell us that that's, that subsystem cushions the family, it's, like, it's foundational mm. to, the, to the functioning of people in that establishment. Wow. And, uh, and, and because of that, that subsystem called spousal helps the stability, determines the stability of the lives of people in the in family. family. How people relate, how the quality mm. of your marriage mm. is, is important for your children's functioning. That's true. Right? Okay, must please say that again. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> say that again because sometimes we, we, these things go over our heads. Yes. Yeah. And, and we begin to blame as parents. We start to blame children. We start, but not knowing that yes. actually it, it starts with, yes, that with us. Yes, yeah. their dysfunctionality begins with, with us. Because you see, children are given to us as, as, as empty slates. Mm. Mm. And so they, the little, I want you to view the little baby that you've got in the one day baby, mm. they are depending on you, mm. breastfeeding and all and all. But also the cognitive, the emotional development mm. we talked about. All those things, their emotional stability, their health, 80% is determined by the spousal relationship. So any person listening in and they are in marriage or they are planning to get married, just know that this is not just casual talk. Mm. It is an important institution, a institution yes. or subsystem mm. that helps to cushion the stability of, of, of children, but also our own individual mm. stability and health. Very mm. important. Then we have a subsystem called parenting. Mm. We have another subsystem called sibling, mm. how children relate. And then, of course, we have a subsystem called other. Yeah. That's where relatives, workers, and all are. But I wanted to emphasize that the moment the marriage is not functioning well, okay, mm. parenting is going to be affected. That's mm. true. You can't be on the mm. same page. Mm. You disagree even when you're on the, you, things are clear. <laughs> and, and, and you find that oh your people, parents are fighting mm. through children. Mm. So this marriage, this spousal subsystem is so, so important mm. that if we emphasize its value, then probably people will do the investment that you're talking mm. about. And that in psychology, actually, and therapy generally, we, we, um, we learn that people can't invest in something until they know its value. value. That's true. Mm. So we are emphasizing that this is an important mm. relationship, yeah. more important than all the other relationships, relationships. you ever have. Yeah. And so it requires investment. investment. That's the point I wanted to make. The mm. second one, Rachel, I wanted to um, add to what he said, mm. investment. When we say it's a, a lot of hard work, I'll tell you what a lot of hard work, I'll, I'll break it down. <laughs> yes, please. please. Now, number one, it begins with self-awareness. Mm. Do you know that we can be in this world and we spend all our lives laboring people, understanding mm. others, but we never go back to, to ourselves, to understand mm. ourselves. Mm. We don't do introspection, mm. we don't do reflection, in my work as a life coach, I've realized actually people don't know themselves. We mm. don't know ourselves. Mm. And we fear to know ourselves. Mm. I used to lead organizations and programs. Mm. And uh, I would do recruitment. recruitment. And, and my, my favorite, favorite question, question was to ask people. So, we, of course, they would come in and say, tell us who you are. Tell us the strength you bring to this. What do you think you're going to do? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I would wait. And then at the end, I ask. Tell me three weaknesses mm. that you have. Mm. Then you would see someone thrown off balance. They mm. go like, huh? <laughs> they go like, weakness. They go like, okay. <laughs> um, I can work very hard. Mm. Actually, me, I can even sleep in the office. Mm. You know that kind of thing. Yeah. Because we fear. We fear to go back. So we don't have an awareness of ourselves. Have no self awareness. Yes, yeah. Now, when you're going to make marriage, mm. you have to know yourself, yeah. mm. and this is a lot of work, yeah. Rachel. Introspection, mm. right? Self awareness. 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 
is so people we don't want to go there mm -hmm. that's the starting point to any relationships yeah, that's and true. when i'm doing therapy when i'm preparing couples for marriage i ask i say do you know yourself mm. Mm. they say yeah Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then when we, we start the journey, down, start the journey <laughs> you realize they they knew a few nice things yeah, about themselves, themselves yeah. and they don't want to go to the negative. Yeah. Yeah. But you see, you can't be better because mm. that's where that's where you're going to yeah. relate. Yes, that's we true. don't know our value system, mm. our standard of right and wrong. Yes, and we don't want to invest in that. Yeah. You know? Mm. Do you know that we get married at values level? Yes. Mm. That's why scripture in Amos mm. 3, 3, mm. two cannot walk together unless they, they agree. agree. Yeah. Yeah. Agreement is at values level. Mm. Right? We, we don't marry at physical level. No, no, no. Say, oh, man, you look good. <laughs> no, so we, we marry at values level mm. because that's where we disagree. Mm. And that's where disagreements break us. Yeah. Wow. So do people take time to invest in mm. understanding yeah. their value mm. system? Do we invest in understanding other people? Oh. That's a lot of work. It is. Because when I'm preparing couples for marriage, once mm. and even when I'm doing therapy, mm. I ask, do you think you understand your partner? Mm. Um, or they say, how can he do this? How can she do this? Mm. But then you haven't, you're married to a stranger. Mm. You have no idea about them. Mm. So when we, we start rolling back <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and they say, okay, tell me about their family. Let's see, um, how did he grow up? What, how much do you know about this? They say, I didn't I go there. Mm. We met in church. Mm. And church. We met in church. Mm. Yeah. We met in church. Naive. We were so happy. <laughs> he was so saved. But this guy or oh, this lady has suffered childhood adversity. Yes. He suffered rejection. Mm. He suffered all these things that we never pay attention Thank to. You. That's a lot of work. Yes. You see, a lot of work, we're not saying we are not sending out people to carry stones and sacks in no. Chikubo. No. Mm. We're saying please take time. Mm. Take time and invest in understanding, mm. understanding. Mm. much are uh, individuals investing in mindset change. Mm. So if you're going to get married and <laughs> remain single, that's going to be a disaster. Yes. Yeah. And that's why it's a problem. Yeah. What do we deal with as therapists every day? Mm. Uh, I, I, I go home at, at four, at five. At five yeah. I sleep out, I don't come back, mm. and I don't see anything wrong with it. Mm. And someone is supposed to take it. I talk to someone any way I want. Oh, you know, no. I don't behave like I, I'm in a partnership, mm. you see? So that kind of mindset change, mm. that mental reconstruction mm. is important for people to know that they're going to have good marriages. If mm. not, you're going to be... So that's the investment, oh, Rachel. Wow. That's the hard work mm. that we are talking about. You know, Rachel, mm -hmm. the, the mindset change is something that is very key mm -hmm. because one of the things that you will find is we think of marriage based on our experiences and they've been painful they've been people you just be, like you said welcome to prison mm. and while that's not true it doesn't take away the fact from those people that it's been a prison for them so because those have been our fundamental experiences for the most part we then approach marriage with that perspective. Therefore, they will say to you, um, so there's a recognition that this marriage thing is good after all. However, mm -hmm. it is a prison. So what do you need to do? As much as you can, buffer yourself. Yeah. This is a setup, yeah. you know, a, B, C, D. So when it comes to finances, when it comes to, you know, there was, why are you getting married now? Mm -hmm. So if you are able to delay as much as you can, because this is just, it's a necessary evil. So if you can, you know, sandwich yourself, it, it doesn't even help that even within the understanding of when we, when we use the word, like, you, you know, within church settings, sometimes they will say to people, well-meaning, of course, but with that understanding, they will say to us, you know, you need marriage counseling. Mm -hmm. And typically, again, the mind thing you're talking about, Dr. Evers, is that we need to renew our mind. For many of us, when we hear the word counseling, we think it is problems. Mm. Yeah. And so when they say to you, you must get marriage counseling before you get 
married. Then we begin, it reinforces that thinking that is broken, that it is a problem. Yeah. So we need to prepare you for the problem. No, 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 no. And that's why I like the choice of words of invest. Yeah. Prepare. Mm. Marriage training. Mm. Because you're entering something that is great, that is wonderful, yeah. but you don't know. Mm. And so let's prep you for it. And let's continue the understanding that you, we continue to be a work in progress. And therefore, the ongoing support. Why? So that at the end of the day, we will bring forth a wonderful testimony mm. and fruit. And so this business of we get married and then all of a sudden everybody who gets married now begins to become quote unquote an expert. I know it all and I cannot be told. Mm. We, that's how we end up dying and crashing. But the ongoing support, it's okay to ask for help. Mm. It's okay. And we don't only go to Dr. Evers when there is a challenge. We also go there when we need affirmation so that we can be strengthened so that it will work. Marriage is a wonderful thing. It's life giving. Yeah. It it uh, the benefits are huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, when they, I mean, I know in some political spaces, mm -hmm. they will check your marriage and see if you're going to stand for office. Mm -hmm. If your family is not holding together, forget it, forget, yeah. because it says some things about, about you. you. It does. Yeah. It does. So, for me, my encouragement is that this work continues. Mm -hmm. Growth continues. The renewal of a mindset continues. It makes sense when I think about marriage needing investment. So one of the things we will say is, for example, you know, to refresh. Mm -hmm. Sit down and drink a cup of tea on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So the cup of tea is not that you are really passionate about drinking tea, okay. but it is a vessel that allows you, it's a means that allows you to be able to be present with one another and to experience some of the things. So routines. So that, you know, that center continues to hold. Yeah. Now, the reverse is true. Mm -hmm. You know, like the, the saying on the street is that heaven, I mean, marriage can be heaven on earth or it can be hell on. So it, it, this, it, 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 it really is true in that sense. In the book of Genesis, I think it's chapter 2, we are told about two trees. Mm -hmm. There's a tree of life. And then there's this tree of, um, of exactly, one leads to life and one leads to death. Yeah. We, we have to choose and say that, you know what, I am not going to go and live by this tree. I will live by this tree again at the beginning. And it's, it's very possible. It's very possible for us to, you know, to experience all of the goodness of Marriage. marriage, that's true. And I think it, for me it begs the question which uh, our, um, this person asked. So is marriage hard or do some people experience hard marriages? Because mm -hmm. again, like in the era that we are living in, we are hearing a, a lot about divorce. We are hearing a lot about separation, you know, domestic violence in, in homes. And so you talked about advertising. If we were to rate marriage, mm -hmm as it stands today, it's not looking very attractive. Mm. I think you can both agree with me. And yet, the truth is that there are marriages that are thriving. And that's true. Yeah, there are marriages that are doing well. It's not loud, but, but they are there. They are there. Yes. And so I think I want you to, to speak to that question. Is, it, is, it, is marriage hard? And you alluded to rules and regulations. I, I want you to talk a bit into that. Doing marriage the proper way and its benefits versus doing marriage the way you want. And uh, its results, mm -hmm. you know, yes, yeah. yeah. Okay, so Rachel, I'm glad you you remind us of that question. The the thing is, marriage is hard because life is hard. That's true. Mm. Generally, yeah. um, there are no easy things in marriage, mm. rather in life. In life, yes. Um, as you were talking, I was thinking about things in in life. Mm. Education. Mm. Is education easy? <laughs> no. Um, when we were growing up, we had uh, neighbors whose children weren't going to school. Mm. And mm. do I want to expose myself so much? But they have been vulnerable. <laughs> now, um, when we, we, so this family, they would wake up early, they would, um, they would, they would uh, sit around the fire and uh, wait until later on, then they go, and their children weren't going to school. So we were young. Mm. Mm. And um, we would wake up, we would take milk mm -hmm. to um, a nearby center, 
we would get school fees from, from that milk. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and my sister and I would carry this can and, and go to wait for the, uh, for the machunda. Um, mm. What are they called? A milkman. Yes. And, and so the milkman would come. And I want to tell you, sometimes we would leave as early as 3 a.m. Because we would walk a long distance and then sit there with our can of milk and, and wait for the milkman. Mm. So he would come around five mm. because he would pick milk from everywhere else until he reaches our place and picks mm. the milk. Now, every time we went home, we, with all the fatigue, and, because after that we would go to school. Go to school. Yeah, we'd go in uniform, then we go to school, then we go back home with our mm. car. Now, I want to tell you, I can't tell you how many times I wished um, we could be like that family that wasn't mm. going to school. Mm. Because they would tell us, because the only way you're going to get money for school fees is from this milk. <laughs> Was it easy? No. no. Did you want it? You see? No. Did I want it? No. no. Yeah. You see? And if you gave me a chance, I would have shifted to that family. Mm. <laughs> and, and, you know, I was talking with, with my... With you didn't get that I chance. Was talking, <laughs> I was talking with my, one of my brother's crazy brother. We are talking about it recently, and we reminded ourselves of how many times we wished our cows could die. <laughs> we were young. Yes. We yes, were young. Yes. And we thought... Honestly, maybe if we didn't have milk, we wouldn't have to wake up so early. Mm. So I want to use this as a foundation for mm. the question that you're asking. Yeah. Life is hard. hard. And even we see it with our children. Mm. When we are waking up our children to go <laughs> to school, mm -hmm. just imagine you say, it, ah, it's so hard, let them, let them sleep. Now, years later, mm. I'm here and I'm talking to the world because I've gone to school. Mm. Now that family where people didn't go to school, I don't even know where, where they are. Yeah. Most of them are dead, most of it, you know, mm. don't worry about that. Mm. But you understand what I'm talking about. Is, is life easy? No. no. Is marriage easy? No. no. Should it be easy? No. no. Right? It shouldn't be easy because everything in life is about hard work. Mm. And so the principle of hard work doesn't just apply mm. to going to office, to carrying sacks and mm. stones. Yeah. It applies everywhere. Mm. Some of the work that we are doing is soft work, like I've talked about, relational work. Mm. It's a lot of work. Mm. You have to exercise self-restraint, you have to do self-regulation, you have to do a lot of patience, yes. you have to manage conflict in a healthy way. <laughs> mm. You're going to have to go back to things, you're going That's to do things scary, you didn't want mm. to do. Yeah. because. It's, you feel tired already. Tired already. <laughs> yes, it's just, yes, it's a lot of oh work. Oh my and you see, God, yes. I, I'm against a message mm. that marriage is supposed to be, be easy. easy. No. Mm. It isn't, and I think it's one of the reasons why most marriages are not working. Mm. Because people go in and feel, oh my God, it's just going to be, yes, there is a part of that, but you see, that is dependent on how you manage the relationship. Exactly, yes, sir. So, if you asked me, a good marriage is our choice. Mm. And as a therapist, I'll tell you, we know the right and wrong things to do. Yes. Probably we don't have all the details, yes. but we know basic things yes. about how to treat each other and how not to, to treat, treat each, each other. other. Mm. Do we choose? I loved what he mentioned, that human nature gravitates towards malfunctioning mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, finding and, an excellent and, and way and to do Yes, it. working in the malfunction. Yes. I love it. Mm. We know. Mm. If you asked someone, I mean, I do therapy every day, and when I'm talking to people, I'm like, but you realize this, that you did is wrong. Mm. Yes, but. Mm. So we love to work in the malfunction. Mm. We know the right things. Mm. The joy, uh, Rachel mentioned on this, um, um, on this show, that um, relational health is easily achievable mm. if, we, if we made good choices. Mm. And different from physical health, yeah. because mm. these, these diseases, the mosquitoes, the, all these things that are going to attack you, they're going to give, give you malaria. Mm. But if you're going to get stress from a malfunctioning relationship, mm. it's a choice. Yeah. Yes. It's a choice. That's so true. it's about what we do or what we don't do, do. right. Now, it's not guesswork. It's yeah. not guesswork. No, it's not guesswork. I want to conclude my, con my submission on this. You reminded me as we were talking about why, why do people think it's a lot of work and, and the whole 
training. Mm. You talked about mm. the training. I just thought about this and I'm thinking, do you know um, that all of life management is about skill? Mm. You keep saying that. Skill. Yeah. Yes. Now, when we, let's leave the marriage and relationship. Yes. Let's go to the workplace. Mm. Let's go to all these other establishments. Yes. How many of us would drive on a, on a bridge they say was constructed by <laughs> by by your favorite border by, guy down. By border guys. <laughs> okay, Do you understand? That's, uh, I'm not using that bridge. <laughs> How many if, if they told you this we are not so sure about this mm. house, actually it might collapse on us. Mm. Mm. But you because enter. because yeah. it, do you understand? Yes, I do. When we are going to construct this house, we are going to get engineers, yes. we are going to get architects, we are going yes. to get them to draw, do the drawings, we are going to have them approved, we are going to do that. Yeah. When we go to a doctor, mm. how many of us are happy to sit with a doctor? They say, oh, by the way, that one is just putting on a white gown, but mm. they're not a doctor. But you can go for... How yeah. many of us would go to that? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I would be mad to go. Yeah. <laughs> if they told you this whole hospital, people who are not there are not trained. Mm. How many of us would go in and, and mm. just, uh, you know, put yourself and say, you know, check for cancer? Would we do that? No. Why do we want expertise? Mm. We want people who are experts in all these other areas. Mm. But we think we can manage this institution mm. yeah. in a very clumsy way. way. Just do it any way mm. you want. If they say do this session, ah, do I need that? Mm. Now, just go to the workplace and see. Workplaces are training and yeah. training and people. On work training. They, all the training, improving people, improving people. Who is training people to manage the institution of family? Yes. So do you get then yes. shocked mm. that we have relationships? I shared statistics yeah. here. Mm. A study that was done in Uganda mm. recently. Mm. Our divorce rates have, have, have tripled. Mm. We are now at 12%. Mm. But let me shock you. 77% of the couples said they were unhappy. Wow. That's huge. Only 11% said they were happily married. Wow. Now we are talking about happy marriages. Wow. So wow. if you have 77% of the mm. married people saying, oh, wait a minute, mm. I'm yeah. married. Mm. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. That is a recipe for bad health. Yeah. yeah. So, but do you know where that is coming from? Just gambling. Mm. Yes. Gambling. So uh, uh, there are churches that have tried mm. to improve a little bit. Mm. And, and honestly, I credit them. Yes. Yeah. The whole concept of premarital counseling, preparing people, people. preparing people, people to manage the yes. institution of family, mm. of marriage. Very important. Mm. I, when I was getting married, I was, I was counseled for two hours. But I want to tell you, <laughs> two hours. <laughs> but you know, don't even, yes, doctor. to manage an institution. But let me tell a you, lifetime one. A lifetime. <laughs> but can I tell you what? Even those two hours, probably about one and a half hours, went into how you're going to match, mm. how the, the oh. maids how are you're going, going to, to be, oh, really? how to do that. 30 minutes. But I want to tell you, 30 minutes of the talk that the pastor, priest gave to us, mm. those those few statements mm. sustained my marriage, oh my God. especially when we had just started. Mm. Now, I'm emphasizing the whole issue of preparation. That's true. So are people prepared to, mm. for the challenge of marriage? Mm. Uh, uh, do, they, do we think we just can get in because we have a skill called love? Mm. No, I've said it here, Rachel. <laughs> That love. You know, when people are in it's love, we think, we think we will conquer the world. Just bring anything. Yes. <laughs> and when we're just married, you look at people who are like, like oh, Bambi, they have no love. Mm. But you see, you have to manage the, the, the foundation that holds love. Mm. And that relationship management is skill. And people have to be prepared. They need to know like, that we run a program on mm. marriage preparation. Mm -hmm. And we run, it's a seven... Um, seven session program, program. on mm. marriage preparation helping mm. people to understand basic things yes. basic mm. in and of course I've, i talked about churches yes. who have uh, introduced mm -hmm. um premarital counseling mm. and um, some of them it's one month others it's done mm. some of them don't you know the way but it's it's something yeah. but i know a church which emphasizes you have to attend this program 
for at, at least three months yeah. or six Dr. months. Dr. Ivers, we do our, prog we our program is a 12 month program. Aha. Wow, and if, you see that? Yes, yeah. and we do, it is over the years, it has been, but sorry, I'm <laughs> cutting No, that's okay, that's okay. The, because this is, for me, it's not a joke anymore. Yeah. It's not a joke because on, on the flip side, the consequences are humongous. They really are. And so when someone comes to us, my wife and I and the team we work with and says, we want to get married, we say, okay. Then we start the process of shaking mm. to make sure that, you know, it is like if you want to ascend to the throne, mm. you know, the king who is there will, will, will hold your hand and, and make sure you are really sure with your ambition. But mm. it is a rigorous process and all of those things are worked in mm. because it's a lifetime. We can't do it in two weeks, not yeah. even two months. And we can't do it as one of the things you check off on your wedding preparation. Mm. Sorry, no. Yeah. So we, we, we need to, and I'm making Karango here for, for people who invest in marriages. Yeah. We, we, it is important because they don't lie. Mm. When you plant beans, Three months later, don't be surprised when, don't, don't go there and thinking you're going to now harvest maize. No, it's beans. What you sow is what you reap. And when we do the foundational work now, and the other thing we're getting into now is that, you know, after those six months, 12 months, there is ongoing support that goes on. A hundred percent. It needs yes. to continue. And a supportive community. Because left to ourselves, sometimes we have good intentions, but we... And so I really, for me, is we need to invest. I really want to encourage that. And just because sometimes what happens is it is treated as <laughs> we invest in other things yeah. except this. So we do that. It's discipleship, really in depth. That's very and, important. And what yeah. I mean, so we'll sit with couples, we'll invite them, they will come home. This thing of doing restaurant dating, yeah. you no, know, because your marriage is not going to be at Cafe Java's no. or at a restaurant. No, no, it happens. So come home. That's both the, so there's the formal part and the informal yeah, yeah. because that's when then shadows begin to come through yeah. because it's hardwired in our system to do things a certain way as we've been exposed to them mm. and sometimes especially for Christians. Mm. <laughs> but let me also answer the question of is marriage hard work? Yeah. I want to agree. We live in a time, Dr. Ivers, a generation of our people today we ex I mean, you look at the music, you look at, we went, I was listening to a song the other day when we're coming, and it was um, minimum effort, maximum enjoyment. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, you, we want to give to do little to know and yet benefit and much. Not. The it's discipline true. of hard work every day, yeah. you keep doing this. We want shortcuts. No wonder you go on social media. We have now stopped. We are raising a generation of people who are unable to express their thoughts fully. What do we do? We, we went from shorthand. Now we do. They're called what? Emojis and men? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah so yeah. someone sends you something, then they go, you get a, a <laughs> thumbs up. Yeah. What does that mean? You know, just say, what, what does a thumbs up mean? Yeah. Express yourself fully. Yeah. So we want the result of good communication, but then we are doing a shortcut. Yes. <laughs> so the issue of hard work, it is required. It is necessary. We need to put in the work. And the cycle for me is, you know, because 24 hours repeat, seven days repeat, you know, 30 days repeat, 12 months repeat, we need to have a routine that repeats and we we do very simple things i like what you said you know relational i forget now what you said but it is what we do to achieve relational health no. it's not a very complicated thing it's not it's not a complex so there must be one two three things that we do on a whether it's a daily thing whether it's a weekly thing yeah whether it's a monthly thing and so all of those patterns need to be set in place but the second part of, of that is that, and it's a principle, mm -hmm. we abuse it, we suffer. Exactly. We abuse it, we, we must invest. We must. We must invest. We, we can't reap where we've not sown. That's true. And, 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 and the truth is, in terms of, 
what we have now is very, very, very likely a result of what we've invested in. A hundred percent. And, and uh, Rachel, as we uh, close, as we close <laughs> I want to close on, I want to close on, yes, uh, on something very small there, yeah. Yes, uh, the, the, as he was talking, I was thinking about um, courses. You've seen uh, in the education sector, courses that um, uh, deal with the delicate part of life Mm. At, um, they are longer, they take a longer yeah. duration. Mm. I was just thinking about like medicine. Yes. Yes. You, you don't just get in and, and, and do a course in online two and, <laughs> <laughs> two months and you're done. <laughs> It's rigorous. Yes. Um, engineering, mm. um, because they know that you you don't just get up and put a building yeah. up or yeah. um, a, a bridge up. You're going to you're, you're going to endanger people. Yeah. And and so many architects and and all that. Those courses. There's there's some science behind mm. it. There's some consideration behind it. And so I was thinking about. Even the one year, well done, that's mm. really great, and keep doing that. But also, I mean, like in churches where they do um, three months, mm. I was just thinking that's a short course. And, <laughs> and so you, you But it's helpful. It's helpful. It's I very, was, and I told, yes, I told it's you helpful. Two hours, 30 minutes were in <laughs> and it <laughs> But um, I'm think, uh, one of the challenges actually we are seeing is that we prepare, but we don't follow up. Mm. And, and when the rubber hits the road, people are struggling. Yes. They go with theory, they get there, they go like, wait what a minute, is, what did you say? Yeah, so the follow yeah. up that is required. Mm. But I, if it were in my means, mm. this would be fully integrated. In, yes. Into learning and, and yeah. prepare, preparing people, and that's what we're trying to mm. do, to make sure that uh, even in universities where people are beginning to, mm -hmm. to, to plan, to date, and to do that, our university is just sending out people, oh. graduates. <laughs> that's what you, you've mm. seen, for instance, that most of the suicides happening in, in mm. higher institutions mm. of learning, they are relationship based. Mm. So we need to invest in preparing people yeah. to manage this whole institution because it requires leadership. This institution has all departments, mm. communication, communication department, finance, <laughs> leadership, <laughs> all oh. that, everything. <laughs> Even diplomatic. Yes, <laughs> you have your in-laws, you have neighbors, friends. hundred percent. It does. Your, your final thoughts as we close. My final thought is I just want to affirm that marriage is an incredible thing. Yeah. It's a wonderful thing. My own, I have had two experiences, not two marriages, but oh. two experiences. <laughs> no, no, no. no, 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 no. I have seen a marriage and marriages where there's been brokenness and yeah. the pain and and then I've also seen what has happened on on this side and I if there is a desire in your heart to pursue marriage please go ahead I mean it's like Dr. Eva said earlier it is it's a wellspring yeah. and but there's necessity to prepare mm -hmm. and um, it would be a blessing the my final conclusion has to do with um, the work that needs to be done yeah. and the fact that we have access to divine help that's a transformation mm -hmm. that on this journey it's not just husband it's not just me and my wife mm -hmm. god is involved as our helper mm -hmm. he will teach us as we are as we yield ourselves to him even now when there's been challenges right now my wife and i are going through a reset process mm -hmm. And, you know, so we can access help, you know, we will come to Dr. Evers, you know, <laughs> and then we will go to Rachel and, and Ben, we will, but there is help that's available. This thing was never designed for us from the onset to do it alone. Yeah. Help is available. Within the marriage covenant, the institution, God has made provision. There's terms and conditions. There's inherent grace. There is power available. There is joys available. There are affirmations available. And as we yield ourselves to it, we will have access. There's wisdom. There's knowledge. There's understanding of how this is done and how not to do this. All of those things are captured within the terms and conditions. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we should open ourselves and say, hey, you know, sometimes it's just saying, I don't know, but how can I? And just one question will open up a world of possibilities and things can begin to get better and they will get better and they will get better and we'll thank God for that. Wow, thank you both. You have spoken so 
passionately about this subject. I can tell you, you feel very strongly about it, but also you have been endowed with wisdom. Mm. Um, and I believe that um, we have answered your, your questions <laughs> because there were quite many. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you, SP, for giving us your time and your, your wisdom. Thank you, Dr. Evers. Um, this conversation never ends, and I think mm -hmm. there's, n uh, there's no end to learning, mm -hmm. really. Um, I like what you said, that even when you do receive your premarital counseling, continue being discipled, mm -hmm. even when you are married. It's something that I, I like to say on this channel, that even when you don't have problems, mm -hmm. go and see a therapist. Don't wait Make time <laughs> to sit with someone mm. and, and find time to assess the mm. health of your relationship. Actually, you should see them more often than mm. you have problems. Well, that's <laughs> there. You had it. You see should. them more. Yes. yes. It's life yes. giving. Yes. Yes. Life -giving. It's also draining for Dr. Evers to receive you on the other end when you are bleeding. When so you're bleeding you know, all the time. Just yes. come when you also smile and say, why are you here? So I'm just here to say hello. Like, yeah. Yes. Nice. Yeah. And that just has a way in which... <laughs> Because when 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 it's war time all the time, it's, mm. there's a lot it's of draining. blood. There's, no, it's be, when there's peace, we enjoy the plants. We yes. and that does something to us. Yes. So I would encourage that we change our again mind renewal. Yeah. Don't only find help when you need help. help. Go for help when you think you don't need help. That's it's true. more life giving. That, that is way. true. It's that is true. I could not have put that any yeah. better. That's Thank you for watching. Let us know in the comment section if you feel like we have attempted to answer this question or these questions um, what has been your highlight your takeaway from this conversation we really appreciate your feedback and if you have a question uh, a concern a burden that you'd mm. want for us to have a, a conversation on please let us know again in our, our, our comment section just type out your question and we'll take note of it and uh, respond in a conversation like we have today we'll be back next week keep it reality check stay healthy stay well don't forget to subscribe like this episode and share it with someone bye bye for now